Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I set up my trace templates in Blackbox Explorer. If you're looking to tune a quad to improve how it flies or troubleshoot an issue with your quad then it's really important to be able to review logs and drill down to see what's causing the problem and how to fix it or where there's room for improvement. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through all of the different workspaces I have in my Blackbox Explorer, showing you how I use them and why I've got them set up that way. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If you'd like to copy my trace templates that you'll see in this video, then you can download my trace templates JSON file from my Patreon, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. These trace templates work with the latest version of Blackbox Explorer, which you can find at blackbox.betaflight.com, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. Once you've gone to the web page, you should see a screen that looks like this, and you have the option to install this app to your computer to use offline by clicking the little install button in the address bar of Chrome here. Once you've got the screen open, you can click open log file video and select BBE trace templates, the file you downloaded from the Patreon, and hit open, and that will load all the workspaces in, and you'll see a little pop-up saying workspaces loaded. Once that's done, you can just open a normal log file, and then you can start using the workspaces exactly as I'm going to describe in this video. To move through the workspaces, to navigate through them, you can use this drop-down menu here, and you have access to all of the workspaces on the drop-down, or more easily, you can use the number keys along the top of your keyboard. So if you want to go to the second workspace, just hit the number two, and after a few seconds, it will jump to the stick tracking workspace, or you can go for number zero, and that will jump you to the battery workspace. It really is that easy to navigate through all of the trace templates that are available in all of the workspaces. The first workspace that we're going to be looking at is the gyro filtering workspace. And here is where I like to check that the gyro filters are set up correctly, and there's not too much noise getting from the unfiltered gyro into the filtered gyro, and then being passed on to the P and D terms on the roll, pitch, and your axis. So for this, I mainly use the analyzer display, so I'm going to open that full screen. And we'll start by looking at the unfiltered gyro, and that's going to give you an idea of um, how much gyro noise you have being passed from the frame, from the motors, into the gyro sensor on your flight controller. Here's an example of a pretty clean um, unfiltered gyro trace. Once you've looked at that, you then want to compare it with the gyro trace. So this is when all the filtering has been applied. Click that, and here you can see the effect of the RPM filtering and low-pass filtering just removes all that noise. You then also want to check how that is being passed to the P-term. So the P-term should look very, very similar to the filtered gyro because it's just um, a multiple of it. Um, typically in terms of noise. And then if we look at the D-term, the D-term has an amplifying effect on noise, so you can see it's a bit brighter than the P-term. You definitely don't want to see too much D-term noise above, particularly above about 100 hertz. That indicates that you've not got enough D-term filtering. And of course, you can go through the same approach with the um, pitch axis and also with your axis, bearing in mind, of course, that the your axis doesn't have a D-term, so typically um, you won't need as much filtering on your, and typically the your axis on most quads is very quiet anyway. The second workspace we're going to be looking at is stick tracking. And here, the main thing we're looking for is to see that the gyro is following the set point nice and closely, and that the P, I, D, and feed forward terms are all acting in the right proportion to make the gyro follow the set point really nice and closely. So here is an example just on the pitch axis. We have the gyro lagging a bit behind the set point, but we can see that feed forward is pushing the quad into the move correctly. We have P term building up because there's a bit of difference between the uh, gyro and the set point and D term acting to kind of damp everything down. And that's all as it should be. We can also check in the motors to see if we're reaching motor saturation during any particular part of the move. So here, just at the end of the move, where the set point suddenly reduces, we do see the motors spike to 100%, indicating that the quad is working as hard as it can to correct the error. 
Looking on the way down, you can see that the, in this case, the gyro is lagging quite a bit behind the set point. And so here we could do things like try and increase speed forward or maybe try and increase the P and D gains to try and get the gyro to track the set point more closely. But this is a trace template that's gonna give you a real feel for how your PIDs are performing and how well your quad is tracking what you're telling it to do with the sticks. The third workspace that we're gonna look at is the RC command to feed forward workspace. And this workspace is really to look at how the signals from your sticks are being transmitted from your radio to the quad and converted into the set point that the gyro is gonna follow. And in general, what I'm looking for here is to check that the RC command is going to be steppy because it's the nature of um, the way the RC commands are sent from the radio to the drone that they're quite steppy. But what we want to see is that the steps are small and equally spaced and that indicates that you have a good rc link with the drone and that you know you have a nice regular update for the rc command to the drone and those steps are nice and small because um, obviously we don't want to have sudden large steps in the rc command in this trace that we're looking at here you can see that there are quite a few large steps and that also the time between steps is not constant and this is typical for certain types of radio links that have um, dynamic swapping between frequencies so like crossfire for example will go from 50 hertz to 150 hertz and and swap back and forth depending on signal strength that can cause these sorts of larger unequal steps that are much more problematic so we want to be checking that the rc command has nice smooth small steps regularly spaced then we're going to look at the set point and the set point is uh, what happens when you take the RC command and you apply the RC smoothing to it. Now the goal here is that the set point should be nice and smooth. So any steps in the RC command should be being filtered out and the set point should be nice and smooth. Um, in this example you can see that we don't have enough RC smoothing and that we do have a steppy set point. This causes problems because when we look at feed forward, which is the derivative of the set point, any steps in the set point trace cause little spikes in feed forward. So this is an example of what you don't want to see when you're looking at the RC to FF workspace. You want to see um, a regular small stepped RC command, a nice smooth set point indicating that you have enough RC smoothing and a nice smooth feed forward trace as well. But this workspace will allow you to debug any issues with your RC command settings. So if you have the ADC filter on in your radio, for example, or um, you have some sort of dynamic switching frequency with the RC link, or if you don't have enough RC smoothing set up in Betaflight. The motors workspace is a nice simple workspace. It just shows you your motor output versus your motor RPM. And the goal here is to see things like what's the maximum RPM that your motors hit, what's the minimum RPM, therefore what's the likely range of motor noise that you can expect from the quad, and also just to check that your RPM is being reported correctly if you're using bidirectional D-shot, making sure that that's accurate. So hopefully this trace will just allow you to double check those things. And in general, if you've got your um, bi-directional D-shot set up and working correctly, then uh, you should see a nice smooth RPM trace that should follow your motor output. The next workspace is for your GPS data. So if you have a GPS that's working on the drone, then you can check this tab to see the GPS output. Now, quite often I'll use this to look at the maybe GPS coordinates during the flight to see where the drone is going. And also, of course, to check the GPS speed if I'm doing a high speed run, see what speed I achieved. So this will give you all the GPS data. And it's also a good way to check that your GPS is working correctly and that it's logging data to the black box as you would expect. When you first open the debug workspace, you'll find it's probably empty. And that's because this workspace is primarily designed for Betaflight developers who are looking to plot the debug outputs from Betaflight alongside other graphs from their logs. This helps them see how their code changes are impacting Betaflight and it helps drive the development of Betaflight forward. If you want to use this debug workspace for yourself, you're going to need to set it up manually. And this is a good opportunity to show you how to manually set up graphs in Blackbox Explorer. So you're gonna click the graph setup button down in the bottom right, and that's gonna bring up this window where you can add graphs. There are some um, pre-set graphs which you can use. So for example, we could add the motors, we could add the uh, gyro and PID roll values, but you could also add a custom graph. 
and a custom graph is going to give you the opportunity to pick from any of the fields that are logged in Betaflight and you can set up as many individual lines on a chart as you want. This is how I set up all of my trace templates. I did it all manually and you can do it manually as well if you'd prefer to do that rather than use the JSON file, but the JSON file is going to be quicker and easier. You can find that down in the video description. Once you've chosen what fields you want to plot out, you do need to choose whether you want any smoothing. So the amount of smoothing that's going to be applied when you turn on the smoothing feature in Blackbox Explorer. So um, you can set that to 30 or 50% if you want a decent amount of smoothing or 0% if you don't want any smoothing, even when you turn on the smoothing feature. And you're also going to set up the expo. The expo is the amount of uh, expo that's applied when you use the feature in Blackbox Explorer with 100% being no expo, as in uh, you click the button, nothing happens. And a number like 20 or 30% being quite a significant amount of expo. So the graph will be really expanded when you use that feature. You can also choose the line thickness, the color of the line, and also the minimum and maximum for the plots as well. And you can set all those up manually, or if you don't want to do that, you can just use the JSON file. Once you've made all the changes that you want to in your graph configuration, hit apply. And then if you want to save the workspace that you've created, just go into the drop down and hit the little save icon next to the debug clock, for example. And that's going to save the output of the workspace to um, your configuration in Blackbox Explorer. And that means it will persist when you close and reopen the program in the future. If you have made significant changes and you want to back up your workspaces, you can also export them by just clicking this export workspaces button and that's going to export it to a JSON file. Workspaces 7, 8 and 9 are what I'm calling the PID error workspaces for role, pitch and your respectively. Here we are looking deeply at the PID values and the PID tune of the drone. The top graph shows you the inputs to the PID controller. So you have the gyro, the set point and the PID error that's used for the P and I terms. In the middle chart, you have the P, I, D, and feed forward terms all plotted. So you can see how the inputs are being carried through to the actual PID values. And then on the output, you have the PID sum, which shows you the sum of the P, I, D, and feed forward terms. And that is the value that is being passed to the motor mixer to control the movement of the quad. So here you can very clearly for each axis, look through the inputs, the PID gains, and the outputs from the PID controller for roll, pitch, and yaw. And that can just help you figure out what you need to adjust in your PID tune in order to get the gyro following the set point more closely. So seven is for roll, and we also have eight for pitch and nine for yaw as well. Obviously the yaw axis doesn't have a D term, and so it's slightly different, but the approach is still exactly the same, inputs, PIDs, output. The final workspace is the battery and power workspace. And here we're looking at the effect of motor output on battery voltage and the current being measured by the current sensor in your drone. So this can be really good if you want to check what the maximum current draw of your drone is. So here uh, I'm peaking out at about 150 amps and also how much the battery voltage sags during full throttle punch outs. So by comparing your motor output to the current that the drone is drawing and the battery voltage that's being measured by the flight controller, you can see how the power system of your drone is performing and also to check things like, you know, do you have a big enough battery? Is your ESC going to be rated high enough for the motors that you're using? All of that sort of thing. So there's a whistle stop tour through the trace templates that I use when I'm debugging drones on a day to day basis. If you'd like to use my trace templates, then there's a link to my Patreon down in the video description where you can download the JSON file and that will just get you set up with all the trace templates immediately. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.